this is the new MacBook Pro. Whoa. It's here. We've been waiting for it. Apple released or announced this uh, in October, and they just started shipping this week. Uh, we actually were able to go to the store and pick one up on, what was that? Was that... Uh, Tuesday. Okay, so November 15th, we were able to go to the store, and we got two, so you could take a look at them. This is the new one. Now, they've had the, the new one without the touch bar for a yes. while. And By the way, I pulled out the, a MacBook. This is a, a current uh, model MacBook. This is their 13-inch laptop. To give you a comparison, this is the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Hmm. So it's a little thicker, but yeah. not much. It's a little bit heavier, but not much. It has a lot more ports. Remember, this only had one type C port. The MacBook Pros have four, along with the headphone jack. Um, this is the 13, just to give you a sense of size. And by the way, to compare this to the MacBook Air, will give you an also a con you know some sort of since the Air has been the lightest, thinnest MacBook still available. This is pretty close. Right. That's the skewing of the lines. This, this is this, pretty close. This doesn't really have a place and, anymore. And the MacBook Pro has a Retina display. The MacBook Air did not. Right, right. Uh, 13 inch, 13 inch. I think that this is probably a better choice. Uh, so we got one 13 and we got one 15. This is mine. I'll show you the demo. We just brought along an old 15 to give you a sense of how much thinner and lighter uh, this is. About half pound lighter. This is a 2015, right? This yeah. is 2015, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is last year's. MacBook Pro on the bottom, the new MacBook Pro on the top. What you do miss is all of those great connectors. Yeah. You're going to be in, in dongle heaven. Okay, so Leo, is that actually a thing? I, I don't use a MacBook, and yes, I understand that some people like to make fun of the fact that oh. I have a string of dongles, but is that really a thing? Well, I, I would say almost everybody has connectors that they carry around. There's no Ethernet port, so you're going to be carrying around an Ethernet connector. I actually have my laptop bag has a bunch of dongles in it. Um, but but it would have probably earlier too, right? I've got a card reader. Now that's one thing you have to get because yes. the SD card slot is is gone. And this is now because it's Type C, I have to get a special Type C cable on it. But it's faster, right? It's USB three mm -hmm. compared to USB two. And by the way, if you're importing large photos, that makes a very big difference in speed. I also have this, which was released. Apple released this kind of multi dongle. This was eighty dollars. They've reduced Ooh. the price on this for the MacBook. Wait, is that 80 before or after the price drop? Before. Okay. So it's Type-C. This was for the MacBook. Mm -hmm. It does work with the MacBook Pro with the firmware update, oddly enough. <laughs> First time I plug it in, it said, okay, we got to update the firmware. It comes with an additional Type-C, so you can use that to charge or to connect additional devices, HDMI and USB. By the way, my card reader also is a USB hub, so that's kind of nice. Once you've got enough USB ports, notice those are USB 3, too, so it's a little bit faster. I have an Ethernet port, but this is the traditional Ethernet dongle, Apple Ethernet dongle, with a traditional Type-A USB connector. But note, and you'll probably be buying a few of these, Yeah. this is a Type-A to Type-C. You had a kind of cool one that was the yeah, it this, was a this adapter. Yeah, this thing, uh, so this is, a, this is a Kingston drive. It's a 64 gigabyte flash drive, but on one side it's got USB-C, and on the other side it's USB-3. It'll work on either. So you can, this could be the bridge between your old device and your new device. So it could be an adapter, right? I could connect, for instance, the Ethernet port to the... Oh, no, 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 no. So this is just purely memories. Purely oh, memories. So this this okay. won't adapt to anything, but it does allow you to use a single flash drive. Well, why is this an devices. any, not an Audi? Right, well, so I can plug it into a port. What port? Oh, this is... USB 3. Oh, it's an any. It's, it is yeah, an Audi. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. it's not an any. It's an Audi. I thought it was an any. No. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I have cables and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about the new laptop. And then Kyle Weens is going to join us from iFixit because they've done a teardown oh, I on see these this. new laptops. So there are a few things we wanted to pay attention to on the new uh, Apple MacBook Pro. One is really great. It finally has fingerprint recognition, right? I mean, PCs have had this for years, although it's not one of those swipe ones. It's just like the fingerprint reader right, on an iPhone. You just there. touch it. And in fact, it's made the same way. In fact, really, and I'll ask Kyle, but this touch bar is essentially a mini iPhone. It's got the secure store from the iPhone, the touch ID from the iPhone. So now the touch bar is lit up and it's programmable. This is the default, by the way, the escape key's still there. You might say, well, wait a minute, it's indented a little bit, but it still works if I touch this end. You can't see because of my big fat hand, but if I touch this end, it, it still lights up the escape key. So it ex its touch sensor sends somewhat into the side there. We still get all the function keys if I expand this. I'll see all the function keys. Furthermore, these are editable, so okay. I can put other keys there. And software also takes advantage of this. I'll launch the uh, new Pixelmator. 
Right. This is one of the big selling points, which is it's aware of what applications are running. So, for yeah. example, if you're running Premiere, it'll give you all your shortcuts. If <laughs> Premiere or Final Cut so does that. Or, yeah. So all the Mac software uh, is doing it now already. Let me open a new document in Pixelmator. But Pixelmator is the first third-party app to, that seems like it supports it. So notice it's put up this OK. It's a very easy-to-read screen. I have a variety of... This is the palette that would be... And it's kind of cool. I mean, it's an OLED display, so the color is good. I love the color picker. If I launch Apple's photos, I can scroll through photos. I even get mini thumbnails of the photos. This is a high-res uh, screen with beautiful color. Um, the real issue I have with this is... I don't know about you, but in about ninth grade, Mrs. Clonky, did you have her <laughs> taught me something called touch typing, right? Yeah. The idea that you don't look at the keys when you type, you look at the screen as you type. All of a sudden, everything you've learned in touch typing is gone because now you have to look down at this touch bar, and there's no way you can know what's there because it changes. So it's, it's context sensitive. So we're suddenly looking at the keyboard again. I think that's a strike against it. That's not what touch typing is all about. And to me, this is Apple's response to a touch screen. It says, well, we don't want you touching the screen, but now we'll give you a little bit of touch, a little bit of sensitivity here. I haven't had this long enough to know whether it's truly useful. I think the objection is clear that you have to look at it. And you have to look down, you have to look down a lot. And if you've been trained not to look down, that's going to be kind of painful. I find what I'm doing is ignoring it. See, I have had a couple of laptops that have had uh, OLED screens, either next to the mouse pad or up at the top, yeah. that are user assignable or program right. sensitive. And they're cool, they, they're fun to use in the review, they, they're, they're flashy, and I almost you always end it. up not using yeah. them. So the, the, this touch bar will be most useful for somebody who lives in a specific program. Yes. If you edit in Final Cut Pro day in, day out, you'll know what those keys are that, and you won't have to look at it and it might be truly useful. Having, and I think that's the same thing for those little side OLED things. They're for gamers. So if you play a game, you can assign those keys. Those mm -hmm. are the keys you hit all the time. You don't have to look at it, right? Uh, so there you go. I think the jury's still out on the touch bar. I think it's going to be of limited utility. Most useful people use the same programs day in and day out and get to know what the touch bar can do. The other question mark I had was on the keyboard. Now, do you have that Mac uh, book? Oh, uh, uh, Jammer B's got them. The old MacBook. So the old MacBook keyboard, because the MacBook was so thin, the keyboard right. didn't have much travel. They had to do a thin keyboard. This is essentially, at least looks-wise, and I'll have to ask Kyle if it is the same part, the same keyboard on the MacBook Pro, even though you have more depth, you have more room, they've decided to do the short travel, the larger keycaps of the MacBook on the MacBook Pro. But they did something different, and I don't know if you're going to be able to pick this up. Let me hold the MacBook up to my microphone and tap a key. Yeah, you can hear that, right? There's a level of click. The thing I don't like about the MacBook is I feel like it's ending prematurely. Right, like I'm you're stubbing my fingers mm -hmm. Because the key stops prematurely. It's like when you have a, a step on a staircase that's one inch too short. You feel like it just stopped. Uh, uh, uh. And I, after a year of using a MacBook, I never got used to it. I was, I've never been accurate on the MacBook keyboard. So let me type the same key on the MacBook Pro. It looks like the same keyboard, but listen to the keystroke. It is. It's, it's it clickier, feels deeper, right? It's clickier. I don't think it's any deeper. I don't even know if that's a real click or a taptic. It could very well be. There's a tap to click that's on the trackpad that feels like a real click. It could very well be tap to click. Kyle will tell us it's that. It's all the feel. It's it the makes satisfaction of the keystroke. It's psychological, but I don't feel like I'm stubbing my fingers right. on this. It's still not as good as a full travel keyboard, but I think it's going to be usable. It's certainly better, in my opinion, than the MacBook keyboard, and that's a great relief. Right. What is much better is the screen. This is a P3 screen. The color gamut is full color. It is Fantastic. It's nice. the best screen I've ever used on a notebook. Uh, easily on a par with uh, Microsoft Surface Books, which are really great keys, uh, screens, rather. This is, you know, this is a beautiful screen. Highly recommend it. If you're a photographer, an artist, you're going to really appreciate this P3 screen. It really is beautiful. Is it, is it properly color calibrated? So if, if I is. was if I was taking it's photos. It's accurate. Oh, yeah. Okay, see, that's... It's accurate. Yes. And that's one thing Apple's really been like very that. good at. Look at the size of this. I wish I had my iPhone here. This is actually <laughs> bigger than an iPhone 7, this trackpad. This thing is massive. Now, I, ah. it's bigger than your hand, Father Track Robert. Hand. Here's an iPhone 7. It's literally bigger than an iPhone 7. Look at that, by a lot. So, Joanna uh, Stearns in the Wall Street Journal said that she was getting some stray 
clicks from the trackpad which she typed. I did not have that experience. My experience is that Apple's very good at what they call palm rejection. Right. When you're typing, it ignores the input. Yeah, that's here. that's just a setting. You can change that. And I, I feel like they've be. got that part down. So as big as that, I don't know why it's that big. I don't know if it needs to be that big. It seems like an awful lot of space. But it, if <laughs> some of you will go, oh, finally. I don't I have a giant <laughs> trackpad. It's still the great glass trackpad that Apple's made famous. So I think they've done a good job there. So those are the those are the big changes. Of course, it's a faster computer. And the other complaint a lot of pros were giving us is it's not the latest Intel chipset. It's not KB Lake. It's a it's mm -hmm. a Skylake processor. Um, it isn't the state of the art graphics processors you might be able to get in some Windows 10 laptops. We got the top of the line here, and that's an Nvidia graphics card uh, in here. The uh, I don't content it doesn't say here. Let me look on. Uh, you're probably yeah. It's it hasn't switched over, so it, it does that thing where it, 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 it chooses switches what it automatically. Needs. Right. And it you know uh, we didn't know much about this new uh, Nvidia Polaris technology. What I've read in reviews and seen in benchmarks, it's not as fast as some no. of the other uh, Nvidia stuff. It's an AMD Polaris. Some of the Nvidia stuff. So maybe a little disappointing. The biggest disappointment is, and Kyle will talk more about this. Zero upgradability. Yeah. You get the RAM you bought, and you can't, it's soldered onto the motherboard. So, and the most you can get is 16 gigs, which for some professionals will just be considered woefully. Inadequate. But I mean, if you buy a Mac, you've been used to that for years. I mean, you, the well, I was able to buy. upgrade my RAM in older Mac. Older, yeah, the older ones. But I mean, in the last three, four years. Yeah, soldering no. it on the motherboards, and that's this is Apple's obsession with thin and light. Yeah. And this is how it plays out. And I know a lot of professionals that say, give me thicker and heavier and more battery life and more configurability. I'd be happier with this. I am not unhappy with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. I think that's fantastic. You could charge on any side. You do get an 87-watt adapter with the 15-inch MacBook Pro uh, and a Type-C connector. But I And that's the one it's going to ask for. But I've noticed I can use almost any Type-C charger, even including phone chargers, the MacBook Pro will say, I'm not charging. That charger's not high wattage enough. But I notice it does trickle charge. It does trickle, yes. So over time, if you close it and you left it, leave it overnight, it might fully charge. It certainly will get some charge. So that's great. To me, the, the fact that I, I mean, I have Type-C now everywhere because of the MacBook and my phones. And I feel like having, uh, being able to use any Type-C power adapter and getting some charge or not depleting is great. So uh, all in all, um, I, it is a evolutionary upgrade for the MacBook Pro. If you, like me, have been sitting on a four-year-old MacBook Pro waiting to upgrade, I think it's probably worthwhile. If you're a pro that needs more RAM or a faster processor or a better GPU, it might be time to move to Windows 10, I have to admit. But for the vast majority of MacBook users, I think this is a very good upgrade. And I, I'm actually pretty happy with it. My biggest fear was typing, because I do need a good keyboard. And, and I'm happy to say the keyboard is good enough for me to use on a regular basis. So the new MacBook Pros, you know, the jury's still out on the touch bar. Um, but in every other respect, it's a reasonable evolutionary upgrade to a line that has been incredibly successful for Apple and probably will remain so. Not quite the super pro machine some of us had hoped for, but I'll be happy with this. And this is Lisa's 13. <laughs> She's very happy. She likes it. She can tell the speed difference right away. Uh, you know, and half a pound lighter, but more expensive. That's the other side. Of that. One of my Twiat co-hosts, Lou Maresco, who works for Microsoft, he just got his brand new 15, and he says he loves it. He says, you know, okay, it's it's not the spec machine that I, I would right. want, but it's a solid machine. It's incredibly well built, which you would expect from Apple. It does everything he wants, and it does give a nice performance boost. So, I mean, if you are in the Mac world, there's nothing wrong with this. The, the one thing that comes up for me is I don't know if I would spend the premium to get the little touch bar. Um, you might look at the one without the touch bar. Yeah. That might be that might be enough for you. Absolutely, the touch bar isn't a huge improvement, frankly. Right. Um, I kind of I kind of agree with Lou, and I think also there's a certain psychology to specs where you think I've got to have the latest spec, but you might not notice it. Jonathan Zadarsky, who is one of the great Apple security researchers, loaded up uh, one of the uh, the, the right, first right. MacBook Pro with a lot of stuff and said I and looked at them RAM usage and said, you know, I don't run out of RAM. Remember, Mac OS is tuned for uh, RAM efficiency. He, he said it is not the problem people are making it out to be. No. So, you know, I've been, pretty, I've been pretty happy with this. Battery life is about the same as the old MacBook Pro. It depends very much on usage. Yeah, I've been getting roughly 10 hours, which is pretty good. I'm very happy with it. So, a quick look. We'll have more, of course, over time as I use this. And my, my big 
you know, long-term question is how useful the touch bar is. My sense is it's not going to be that. It's going to be like your experience was. Yep. I probably won't end up using it. It's, it's flash, but and it's fun to show off, but in practical use, probably not so much.